Hi, it's Brendan here from Strength and Conditioning Education, and I'm here with Ross Chisholm, the speed demon, they call him. <laughs> no, they don't, I just made that up. Um, we're gonna go through some speed training drills, and clearly this is a key area for most sports. Linear speed, multi-directional speed. A couple of things that Ross is gonna go through is some of the jumping progressions that he does and some of the technical movements he does, and we'll have a little chat about how that stacks up and how we put that together as coaches and, and how we program it as well. Happy with that, mate? Yep. So good. take us through your session. I'm going to watch avidly and, um, and chip in when required, mate. So what, where are we starting? So I'd have already done my full like warm-up, getting yeah. myself... So mobility work. Yeah, and, like yeah, stretching and making sure my hips and ankles are moving yeah. well. Then we sort of... The coach would we'd then build into some, some proper ankle and like speed. Yeah. drills to basically just get you firing and used to being in the in the movement so this yeah. first one that we do is sort of like a low ankle dribble so you just come in so we've got a low ankle dribble what are you thinking about here what are the key points for you when you're doing this Ross so like, as we spoke steps. about before James our, our coach is basically looking at my ankle reactiveness off the yeah. floor yeah. so I'm trying to basically get a quick contact without my leg kind of drifting forward yeah so as you see i'm trying to like move yeah. forward but keep my yeah my feet underneath that's me, so that, i feel like, like a punch almost punching punching the, the floor away from you a little bit so you yeah. get that reactive drive yeah you. and trying to almost like so as you come up point up so then you go yeah on your mid he always yeah. speaks about that trying to get that midfoot contact yeah yeah so then push off it gives another set then and we'll have another look at it and you can hear that contact, can't you? Yeah. That's a really nice drill to listen to, especially in a squash court, but you can actually hear if you if those contacts are dull, it's not the right mechanism yeah. to use it. You're not getting that. Punch. Yeah, you're basically like, so to start if you might just lift. Yeah. So you're trying yeah. to stop your legs like swinging forward, but like lift your foot up. So then that's doing yeah. the movement. So when you run, one of the things we've been working on is Sometimes I drift out with my foot. Yeah. This obviously I was quick, so you're trying to almost like run forward, but you need the ankle mobility. Yes. To yeah. then drive. Yeah. Cool. What's through. next? What's the next one? So then we we almost do that, and then so I do that, and then build into like a hamstring. Yeah. And you can still hear. Yeah. You can still hear my feet. I'm still making that nice. So you're still getting that contact, but with straight legs yeah so trying to this one is trying to like lean forward get that hamstring swing and still so basically like pulling back with your hamstrings trying to get that yeah contact propel you forward yeah then we build into a knee dribble yeah so we wouldn't do too many of these it'd be like a couple of a couple of sets. reps over 10 meters and then yeah. it'd be a high and i'm trying to basically like almost like drive my heel forward yeah a bit more with this one, so you can still hear the foot contact. Yeah, so interesting there in that you're, we, we call it stepping over the opposite knee a little bit. So rather than bringing that from low to high, we're kind of bringing that there and through. Yeah, yeah. like so, I'm trying to basically, yeah, bring it up to my, as high as to I can, to my, yeah. to my arse basically, to then drive through and then yeah. pull down. Yeah. Not exactly Let's sure have another why, but then. yeah, yeah, and it's a, it's an important one because if we go from if th that step over the knee means that you're in a good position to then drive apply down. that force, whereas if you if you go from a low to high, it takes so much more time. It's just not the right mechanics for yeah. for sprinting. So that's where that step over your knee, and you see that when you're doing hurdles and yeah. stepping over hurdles here. You know, it trains that. Yeah, so we do, like, after I've done this, I would do some hurdle stuff as well, like working on, like, mobility like that to basically get yeah. everything. So basically, when you run, yeah. you're basically, like, you're, so you're training that, like, pattern of trying yeah. to run as quickly as possible. Um, so once we've done the hamstrings and then we've done the Then I go into more of, like, dribble. a speed, okay. a speed one, which is less exaggerated. You're still trying to drive your heel forward, but... It's less. Yeah. You'd be for speed. So, whereas that one's sort of quite slow, 
this one you'd almost pick the pace up and be. Okay, yeah, 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 nice. So you're getting the full cycle now. Yeah, it's, yeah. as you can hear, I'm quite out of breath. It's quite, yeah. 10 well, meters. It's, it's intense, isn't it? 10 meters enough, because it's actually quite, yeah. quite tiring. And, and the thing with speed is it's all about quality, not quantity. You yeah. Can really, five, 10 meters max, but making that quality, and then enough time for you to come around and think about what you've done and improve and get some coaching and improve and do it again. Yeah, yeah. so what we do with, uh, with James is he'll basically be filming with an iPad. He'll be fi filming your feet, filming from behind so you can see where your foot angles are and then yeah. you can basically see like, all this stuff I'm going from is yeah. what he showed me on the iPad. He'll be like, look at this. Yes this thing here, this is what we're, again, trying to educate me, yeah. so then I can actually understand it, and then when I'm running, like, when I'm playing a game, I don't think about it, but when we're doing our drills, I'm sort of thinking, yeah, let's get that drive through that nice straight, yeah. to yeah. try and generate as much force as possible. Makes sense. Um, so he's always videoing it, which is, like, I, I think, and is a really good tool that you can, because then you get that instant feedback, he's yeah. there, literally, like, quick, See yeah, that tweak one. that a little bit, see how you did, yeah. Exactly, yeah. which is... Yeah. Makes total sense. Really, really yeah. useful, and that's a tool that he uses. Because actually, it's all well and good him telling me, but if I can see it as well... Yeah, and it, well, it's the same in the gym when you're doing yeah. your squats or your, your cleans or whatever your exercise is. If you can see a slow-mo and say, you know, your, your hips are extending at this point, we want to work on that, so stick your chest out more. Yeah. It gives you feedback, right? Yeah. Same with speed, you don't know what, if you don't know the mistakes you're making, how can you ever fix them? Yeah, exactly. Simple as that. So we're moving on to some jumping now? Yeah, so that once we've done all those drills, I then basically fire myself and improve, actually make sure that I'm improving on that reactive strength. So I'd have more hurdles than this normally. Yeah. I'd have like five hurdles. Yeah. And if I kind of pretend there's a hurdle here, so I yeah. start my first one You're off. not allowed to fall over this one, yeah. though. This one <laughs> yeah. So I'd sort of come in, and it's about reacting as quickly as you can off the floor. Yeah. So kind of in. Like trying so to basically just like yeah. fire. So you're thinking about minimizing the contact time in those spaces and getting through. It's not as much about the height, it's the contact yeah. time. Yeah, like obviously the higher you get, the better, because you're. Yeah. So I'd probably yeah. work on hurdles, probably about that kind of height. Yeah. To get over. Let's have a look then. Let's uh, g give us two or three sets with the imaginary one in place. So quick off the floor, punch, punch. Again, that's another cue I use a lot with hurdle jumps is punch the floor. And you're almost, when you're in the air, you're almost pre-tensing. Yeah, so that's where, when you're running, that's where that's coming from, is I'm like yeah. pre-loading my yeah. calves. To basically fire off. Yeah. yeah. And that's what that's yeah. kind of doing, and something that we spoke about earlier on about me needing to get a bit better. And it's made a huge difference yes. to, my, to my speed, particularly when my hamstrings and quads are tired. I can actually go to my reactive strength yeah. a little bit more. Nice. Last set then. Nice. Any other jumps or anything you want to show? Yeah, so we do some like single, some single leg hops, basically working on sort of that ankle movements when you're running to get that midfoot contact. This yeah. like exaggerates it. So basically just working for like heel, trying to get off the floor as quickly as possible. So you, what are you where are you trying to plant? Are you trying to plant heel. flat? So if you kind of like going for that, yeah. so like that, then push yeah. off. Yeah. If you're trying to do it as quickly as you can, so it's like a... Yeah, yeah. It's tough, that, because that's... It's hard. You're not working on your, your speed off the floor, you're working on getting the, the, the movement pattern right. Yeah, so you're working on trying to do it as quickly as you can, Yeah. but it's not going to be as quick as that, because obviously you're going bang. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bit slower. Again, yeah. you can hear yeah. my breathing. Like, it's it's, 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 it's yeah. quite hard, and you need, like, like the good thing we, we always do is in between we play a uh, lot of games so we get like the French balls out and stuff yeah. so actually again going back to like the injury side of things for me with my arm at the moment we can do yeah. loads of speed but it'd be so boring if I was just yeah, yeah, yeah. doing speed Tops and so it's stuff, like yeah. right okay let's go and have a game of yeah have a laugh come back in we've gone through some really good stuff there 
clearly, before we do any of this, we need to have a really good warm up. Yeah. Mobility work. And that's where you can do your hurdle mobility stuff as well as general stuff. Yeah. The, the ankling and the, the knee dribbles that you mentioned, that's really obviously the technical model. It's improving the technical model of sprinting so that your shapes look better and more efficient. To do that, we need to know what a good technical model is. You know, it's, it's like, how do you know if you're making a mistake if you don't know what the correct way of doing it is? And then you need to know what mistakes you're making so that you can actually improve on them, which is where the iPad feedback comes in. Yeah. And then the jumping and the single leg work, the hopping and the bounding, is then working on the quickness and the physical qualities that underpin those shapes. So to do this and drive like that, we need reactive speed. To do this, we need a level of mobility. So it all brings it in together into your speed session, which yeah. is where you've, you've clearly got some gains there, both from reactive strength power yeah. and your technical development as a, as a sprinter, I guess. Yeah, and it's so individual to me. That's, what, that's what's so yeah. good about my program is that specific speed session. Is for you. Is for me. Now that other players are doing different drills to me. Yeah. Um, they're doing sort of more like bounding types or working on that actual like range at the hips and stuff whereas yeah. mine is specific to what my strength is and what it looks like on the iPad so. And that's, that's, it's a huge principle of training. We've got to make our training programs individualised and specific to the sport where possible. It's better for buy-in and ultimately you haven't got loads and loads of hours of time through the week. This stuff takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of concentration and focus and mental energy as well as physical. So if I've got you for 30 minutes as your coach, I want to make sure I'm getting the biggest bang for your buck possible with you, yeah. with your physiology, with your technique, that I can. And that's where we've got to look at focusing and zoning in and, and using that iPad and, and watching the footage and the biomechanics more effectively, haven't we? Yeah. Thanks mate, really interesting stuff. Give those things a go. We talk a lot more in depth about those on the Level 4 programme and our mentoring and our online programme, so check those out as well. Thanks Ross for your help mate. We'll be back again very soon with more quality content. Thanks for watching.